Hey guys, in this quick video, I'm going to show you how you can basically use the sum if formula to essentially create a um, calculation of how much you've sold in a specific month uh, based on a specific product ID selected. So I'm going to create two data validation drop down lists. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to go down over to the right. We're going to put in a data validation. Uh, drop down and we're going to do that from the data tab so if I go over to the data tab and then we head to data validation I'm going to hit data validation here and I'm going to go down to the list now I've got tables set up on each of the pages for the uh, information that I want to pull in this case I want to pull product information I want to know each of the product uh, part numbers so in order to do that typically you would think that you'd be able to actually use a a structured reference to a specific table so in this case I have a table called product info and then being able to use product info and say product name you'd think you'd be able to do this but you'll see that it's not something that you can actually do you can see that it's actually highlighting that area but in data validation it only allows you to use uh, formula ranges so or I should say name ranges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a name range uh, based off of the table name. So let's go back and what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the formulas tab and we're going to go to name manager. We're going to go to new and we're going to type in, let's just say call it item number. And item number is going to be derived from, let me clear this out, product info and we're going to open up that bracket as a square as a structured reference and then we want the product name so that's perfect i'm going to hit okay excellent so you see now that if we open up the value section you can see that it's actually showing uh, those values that are under the product information so if i were to select this you'll see that it automatically brings me to product name when i select that uh, range that we created next one i want to create is the month year so in this case, I have a specific tab with the month year information available for our drop down. So I'm going to just say here month year like this. And what I'm going to now do is go over here down below. We're going to say month. And that will sometimes happen year combination. Actually, I think what was my table name? Let's go figure out and make sure that we got the table name right. I don't think I changed the table name. If I just change the table name here and we say month, year. Now I can go back and go to our formulas tab, go back into the name manager, and we're going to go to new and we're going to say month, year is going to be the name of our name range. Let's just do underscore to make it different than the actual table name. And what we'll do now is go month, year, square bracket, which is the structured reference for referencing a table. And then we're going to want to say month, year as uh, the field. And perfect. Now you can see that we've got that perfectly referenced. So now if you were to add information to this table or to the product information table, the nice thing is, is that this would automatically update uh, accordingly because it's a structured reference to the entire field name um, that is set up on those tables so if we hit close now we go to sales data scroll back over here and let's add the data validation now so the first one we want to add is going to be let's go back over here data validation we're going to select list and we're going to say equal to um our first one was month underscore year and you'll see now that we have this dynamic selection just to show you if we were to actually add another record into this table and we wanted to go back one more month you could say uh so we would want august 2015. So now if we headed back over to our data set and we looked down below, you'd see that that's also added now. It just said August 15 there, which is fine. But So now what we're going to do is I'm just going to add a quick border to this and I can just type up here 
in small characters, we can just say this is our month year selection. And over to the right, we'll add another selection for our product number. So what we're going to do again now is go back over to the data tab. We're going to go to data validation, go to list, and we're just going to say equal to item num, I believe is what I called it. Yes, it is. Perfect. So now that you can see that, if we scroll down, we have all the part numbers. And we'll just type in product number above. Or we'll put an item number. And we'll shrink that up a little bit too, just to clear it up and make it a little cleaner. Perfect. And same thing, I'll apply a quick border to that. So now that we have two nice little drop downs working here, and then we can say, okay, the user can come in here and select based off of this table uh, any given month and part number. So now that we have that information there, what we can do is we want to use the SUMIF formula to calculate and find the specific quantity sold in a given month for a particular part number. So this is going to be used obviously a lot of, a lot of the time because people want to know exactly how much is being sold in a specific month, probably for a specific product ID. So that's why uh, I figured this would be a good little practice. So we're going to use a sum ifs formula because we have two different values that we have conditions for. We have the condition of the month and we have the condition of the part number. So what I'm going to type into the H cell here is going to be equals sum ifs. And that's asking me for the sum range. The beautiful thing is, is we're using structured references because we've got tables set up. So the sum range is actually going to be the quantity sold over here which is on our uh, sales table. So if I type in sales, you'll see that it automatically comes up down below here. And then we use the square bracket and then we can actually select it just simply from the drop down list that's become available. I can double click on quantity sold and then we're going to close that square bracket. And that has made a reference structured reference to the quantity sold. And then the criteria range one is that um, this specific cell h2 which is our month is equal to i'm sorry we're gonna do that again criteria range one is going to be the criteria range so that's going to be based off of the month year column i'm sorry so this is going to be um quickly we're going to do sales again and we want the month year column is going to be our criteria range and then the criteria is going to be equal to I don't even need to type equal actually in this case I'm just going to select h2 and perfect so that's going to be our first part of the formula so the sum range of course is we're going to find the quantity sold where the month the first criteria is where we're looking at the sales month year within based off of the value selected up here which is August 2016 in this case and then the second range that we're going to want to select in review is the part number so we're going to type in again here criteria range 2 is going to be sales again and it's going to be based off the item and now we're going to select our criteria which is equal to J2 now these are all currently relative referencing. You can actually set these two values here or cell references as absolute references because that would just make sure that if you were to drag this anywhere, it would continue to refer to those two cells. But in this case, we don't care because I actually have it and I'm not going to be moving this particular cell location. So if I hit enter now, perfect. So now we've got 152 pieces sold on August 2016 for or in August 2016 for part number three. So if I were to select a different month now, and I said May 2016, and I said, okay, well, you know what, I want part number four. You can see now that that is updating accordingly. You could, of course, play with the um, 
the actual fonts here and the coloring and whatever you want to do kind of to make this a little cleaner you could just say this would be uh, total value sold so if we put in above this uh, total value sold and then we centered it clean it up a bit and we can make this as and then probably just insert another row to give us some space here center that a bit and then if you want to just put a whole border around the entire thing you can do that just to make this look pretty so just do an outside border like that so there you go total value sold is now displaying so again, now if we switch any of the months, we can confirm now that April 2016 for part number four. So if we did a quick filter down here and we came and said part number four, let's just find it in our list. Nope, oh, let's said all part numbers. Let's go part number F4, deselect all those and then select part number four. And then we wanted to do it for April 2016. Now that removed columns, but if I did a quick highlight, we'll see that that is 196 pieces were sold. So now let's just remove our filters and remove our filter from month year. And of course, you can see that it matches at 196 pieces. So that means their formula is working perfectly fine. And we've quickly now created a place where any user could come in here quickly and figure out exactly how much was sold for any given month for any given part number just like that i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any questions please feel free to leave comments below uh, i appreciate you checking this out thanks we'll see you next time